Thanks for having me, and thank you very much for being here. I'm Barbara, and uh, yeah, until two years ago, I worked in data-driven policy consulting with a focus on labor market economics, and now I work in the private sector um, and do data-driven consulting there. So I work... Um, um, okay. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking to you about um, a machine learning model on crowdfunding campaign success. Um, why did I actually start this project? So um, I started this project out of curiosity about uh, analyzing data and trying out new things. And more specifically, so my impression is that in uh, machine learning applications in recent years, more and more used is um, using information from images and using information from texts and trying to uh, improve, um, improve model predictions. And this is what I want to be focusing on today. And sorry. So this talk is about a machine learning model and crowdfunding campaign success. And my focus is on can word and image features, so can word and image information in, in the statistical analysis improve your prediction? And in general, um, machine learning can be used in many different contexts. So for example, if you work in marketing and you want to um, predict whether or not your customers buy a certain product or whether or not your customers might churn in the future, um, it can also be um, applied in finance to find whether or not people um, um, are involved in fraudulent behavior. Or, for example, if you have a if you work in media or you have a journal and you have uh, so readers and you want to predict whether or not your readers um, cancel their subscription. Um, it can also, of course, be used in um, education research. For example, if you have data on on, on children, then you can quite precisely predict whether or not in 20 or 30 years they will end up with a university degree. Um, or in health, for example, when you have data, so you have treated people and with a certain treatment and you want to predict the likelihood whether or not they will come back in the future. So this would not necessarily involve image and text information, but nevertheless this would could be in the context of um, applied machine learning. So this is what I'm going to be talking to you about, or this is how the framework of what I'm going to be talking to you about it looks like. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how you can imagine the data looks like. Then for a couple of slides, I will um, walk you through the, my, what I call, analytical design, so what I'm actually doing. Um, then I will present shortly some results and wrap up. Um, so here I want you to show just as an example uh, a crowdfunding campaign. You, I guess, would most likely know what it looks like. So this is a campaign where people try to raise money for an um, um, organic cleaning product, products. And so this is just an example, and you see on these web pages usually how much money they wanted to raise, then how much money they raised, how many people, how many backers um, they had in the end, and whether or not they reached their goal. Then this comes along, so why do people involve in um, um, yeah, paying money or um, su supporting that project? Is They um, read about it, uh, so here are, is a text description, then you have the title of the campaign, and going a little bit down here, so you have image and, and video information here. And I will focus, I wanted to do more, I have to admit, but uh, I will focus on the title and on one image um, that I have of these campaigns. So stylized look of the data is the title. Here would be three examples, so you know that there are different, these campaigns would be 
different. For example, um, they could be trying to raise money to save an animal. And then I have in the data how much of what they wanted uh, they indeed um, raised. And then what I do is I um, um, calculate a binary outcome, yeah? Zero or one. Zero is it has not been successful, and one it was successful. Um, so I have these different categories. Then I have whether or not, well, how much uh, percentage they raised, um, the collected amount, and a link to one image in the data. So this is uh, just to give you an impression of that there is variation in the data. Um, what you see here is in white the success probability, and you see here uh, a couple of campaign categories, and you see that even by like the, just looking at the campaign category, the success rate varies. You have in blue and red, it's not really important um, how big these data are, so that's in, um, in blue, um, the, the, on average per category, the, what the campaign wanted to raise. And in red, what it raised indeed. And in white, again, are the success rates. So, and what I'm focusing on is not whether or not um, by campaign categories there is variation in the data, but whether or not what's in the picture and what's contained as information in the title influences um, the prediction. Um, okay, so this is what I'm going to be talking about for most of this talk is the analytical design. So we have a classification problem here, and um, that's what I'm starting with. Um, yeah, this is stolen from Chris Albon. Uh, I can quite like his um, graphics. So a classification problem is when we are trying, uh, <coughs> uh, when we are training a model to predict a qualitative target. So whether or not in our case, whether or not the campaign is successful. So whether or not the campaign has raised um, what it wanted to raise, yeah? Um, so loosely, um, in my head, there is the, this model, the campaign success is a function of the image information, what I call image features, and text features, and other stuff, but on this other stuff we're not focusing on today. Yeah, so, but um, there are many different ways to solve such a classification problem or to model um, mm, this um, binary outcome model. And um, with all different models, um, I have, with ev each of these models, I have to choose different hyperparameters, so-called hyperparameters. These are decisions that I have to take um, when it comes to apply these statistical models. So for example, logistic regression has different ones compared to decision trees. And so one could spend endless am uh, amount of time already on this step, up trying to optimize these hyperparameters. So what I did here is I used automatic machine learning from H2O, it's called AutoML. I wanted to try out that tool um, to save time here. Um, so next what I'm going to tell you is how I used image classification. So again, I want to, I have images and I want to basically um, attach numbers to these images and then draw information on what's in these images. What I do is um, I use a pre-trained model from Inception V3 that's just uh, some technical information in case you want to look it up. Um, and what happens, um, I plug in this picture and, and I get out uh, probab predicted probabilities of 1,000 different classes. So per class, which is one prediction, um, the probability that in the picture you see this class. Yeah. So I give you some example using my own pictures. And why do I give you my own pictures? Because I want to show you that um, this is not what the model has been trained on, yeah? And so these are pictures I took, and I can tell you for sure what's in the picture. So this is actually a poodle of a friend of mine, and I took the picture myself, so we know it's, it's a poodle, and we know that the, this pre-trained model has not been trained on that picture, yeah? Um, and what I show you um, is what this pre-trained model um, thinks 
it's in the picture. So this, these are the top five categories, top five predicted classes. This would be a thousand classes long here, but I'll show you the top five of it. And actually, indeed, it says <coughs> that with more than 75%, it recognized, oh, this is something like a poodle, a toy poodle or a miniature poodle. And the other three top five predicted classes are also dogs, actually, in fact. Um, then I show you another example, um, and I call it sort of surprising image. Um, I also took that myself. Um, it's a TV on a beach, yeah? Th this is not something you would actually um, think you would find on a beach. Um, Again, this model has not been trained on, on this um, picture, and, and I'm sure it has not been trained on TVs on beaches. So what does, did it actually recognize? And please note that more than 50% of, mo of this picture is actually a beach, yeah? Um, and not a TV. But with more than 80%, um, so among the top five are more than 80%, it recognized um, that it's something like screen or monitor or television, yeah? So this is also quite human-like, so what you would, um, what a human would see. It would not say uh, this is a beach surrounding a television, but it would say it's a yeah, TV on a beach. And that, then, as a third example I wanted to show you, um, that's sort of a random collection, what's in the image. Um, I took it in front of it, so it's obviously a selfie, and uh, I took it in front of an art ga gallery in Munich, so this what I call art egg, so um, sitting on sort of a little carry vehicle there, and then we have a tourist bus in the back in blue, and let's see if any of what what comes out of this prediction, so this pre-trained model, what does it say about what's in this picture? So, so first, it doesn't recognize anything, obviously, yeah? So, of course, certainly not me, because I was not in part of um, what it has been trained on. Um, and then the top category is a trolley bus, and it's actually, it is not a trolley bus, yeah? Then we have streetcar with almost 10%. It's also not a streetcar. Um, parking meter, police van. And I kind of guess that police van is because of the blue color, yeah? But it's, in Germany, actually, police cars are not blue. Um, I think. Um, and then traffic light. I don't know if it thinks I'm the traffic light, but nevertheless. Um, so I, I wanted to show you these, picture, uh, these um, examples to give you also, um, so that you can see th uh, or you can grasp an idea of what the limitations of applying that um, is um, in this context. So plugging in data from these campaigns, um, these would be the top predicted classes. So a book jacket, website, comic book, jersey, and so forth. Um, I only focused on the top predictions and throwing away all the others. And also, I did not take much consideration on um, uh, how, uh, like the, the predicted probability. So these numbers here, I did not um, focus on, but only took the po uh, top one. Okay, the second part um, I want to focus on today is um, how can I use um, word information? Um, so I split this um, into two parts because first I had to come up with, I have to pick, um, I have to extract one word because we have these titles, even only focusing on the titles and not another um, text, we have to uh, think of what, how do we use that. Um, so what I did is I extracted one word per title, and then also here I used pre-trained model um, to attach numbers, so to say, um, to these words. And so again, it's not full titles, but selected words. So uh, let me say a few th words about how I selected these words. Um, I've, um, I could 
take the first word per title or the last word per title or the longest, but that all kind of seemed arbitrary to me, even more arbitra arbitrary than using a sort of measure. So anyway, I used the measure. Um, this is called TF-IDF, and it's quite common in using or working with text information. And again, I stole this from Chris Alban. Um, so what is it, this measure? So in the first um, part here, I want to select one word per title. And the TF-IDF, this is the term frequency inverse document frequency, is a measure of originality of a word by comparing the number of times the word appears in a document, so here in a title, with the number of times that, um, doc so that title appears in, in all the corpus of titles. So, um, two things. The more often um, a word is in uh, one title, the, the higher this value is, but at the same time, the more often this word is in the whole, um, in all the other titles, the lower it is. So the more, spe the more special, basically, this word would be. So I give you some examples. And these are fictional titles of campaigns. So Poodle Needs New TV. So these are somewhat related to these pictures. Free TV, uh, free beach from TV, and then join my digi digital city tour, join today. And the corresponding values would be um, the following. So these values are all depending on what you feed in, yeah? Uh, compared to these pre-trained uh, models that I showed you on the pictures and on the next couple of slides, where this is not depending on what you feed in, this does. Um, so here are two things I highlight. This measure, you see here that this um, becomes lower the more often this word appears in, um, in, the whole, in all the other titles. So you see TV is in two titles, so it's lower compared to the other words in that title. And the second thing I want to highlight here that join is um, part of the third title twice, appears in the third title twice, and this is why it, is, it gets a higher w value, yeah? because it's more important to that title. What I did is I picked then per um, title one word, which had the highest of these values, and note that um, in reality we don't have it often, we almost never that th there are words with the same values, because it's just so much more variation. Okay, so we had one, have one word per title. And then what I do is I use again a pre-trained model. And again, here are different options that I can pick from. And I picked something called GLOVE, Global Vectors for Word um, Representation. And how this works in practice is I have one word, plug it in to this pre-trained model and get um, a vector of 300 words. So just to show you these examples, Poodle Beach and TV is known. So there's actually, for you to know, there are different languages also trained. And um, this, I took the English version, and you see that um, uh, for these three words, we have, we just get these 300 wor um, numbers that we can use in the analysis. It's not that I it can interpret any of these um, um, features directly. Um, okay, and then I want to show you if you plug in something um, rubbish, sort of, this is not a word. I plugged in this is not a word and I received just zeros. And then I, this also, um, this is a lake, Amazi in, in the south of Munich. Um, uh, it also wasn't recognized by this. Um, pre-trained um, model. Um, these would be the picked words from the campaign data, love, short, dance, and so forth, would be the top um, words uh, selected. Okay, so finally about the design. Um, we will... Um, 
uh, we will use the AUC, which is a quite common measure um, in machine learning to compare different models with each other and th their predictive power, so to say. And the area under the curve is something, th it's this area under this curve. This is the receiver operating characteristic. And it represents the true positive rate and the false positive rate, so these on these axes. And for all probability thresholds, it's actually not important um, what this is at the moment, um, for all probability thresholds of binary classifiers. Yeah, this is what we have. We have this binary classifier, yes or no, the campaign was successful. Um, and then the AUC um, evaluates the overall quality of the model. And important for us to know is the more AUC, the better. So the higher it is, the better. And then two more things. Um, if we have really not a good model, then it would be 0 0.5. Yeah, then w whatever it predicts is, um, is as good as sitting um, on your sofa and tossing a coin. Um, and that the higher, the better. And it can be one, can grow yeah, to one here. Okay, um, then uh, I will come to the results of my um, project. So um, uh, I use, again, I use this H2O automatic machine learning to save time on the hyperparameter tune tuning. And um, what you see in the following is the highest AUC the highest area under the curve value displayed uh, that um, I, I got from this from running this um, this model um, and remember the higher it is the better so um, no features gets us we will result in 0 0.5 AUC and then um, when adding image features it grew uh, but it didn't grow uh, dramatically. Uh, it grew to 0 0.52. And what I actually did, how I did that, is I picked per campaign the most likely prediction, and then I in included, so to say, dummy variables for whether or not um, the um, campaign um, had um, um, an image predictors as being a poodle or as being... Um, um, a TV, yes or no. Okay, so the next um, result was also not um, incredibly um, better. So adding on top were the word features that I extracted from the title, from one word from the title, um, the AUC grew to 0 0.55. Yeah, but um, nevertheless, this is something that, um, as a start um, we could work with. So Again, just to wrap up what I did here, um, these machine learning models can be used in many other contexts. Uh, so whatever you are interested in, when you have data on a certain topic and want to predict a, an outcome, it doesn't necessarily, of course, need to be binary. It can also be, um, for example, um, yeah, the, in this case, you could uh, predict um, the actual amount of what they um, um, receive in dollar. Um, then uh, I discovered, for, at least for me, that this automatic machine learning saved a lot of time. Yeah, but nevertheless, I would, of course, um, also say that um, coding it yourself, um, you might be more sure what's actually going on here, um, or at least comparing what comes out from this automatic machine learning to whatever um, um, you are used to doing, your running your models. And then these pre-trained algorithms that I showed you um, were actually pretty easy to implement, and you can, um, yeah, without much knowing about them, doing it yourself. So ways to go, of course. I mean, um, this was the prediction um, was not really um, improved tremendously, but nevertheless, there would be so many more things that you could do and could come up with. Um, for example, you could more use more text. Um, um, you could use the taglines and also the description of the um, of these campaigns. Then you can explore probably video data or exploring more um, than just one image. 
Uh, you could try different pre-trained models, of course. And then what, of course, you can always do, but um, I didn't do here, instead of using pre-trained models, you could train um, your own models um, that are custom-sized, custom custom-made um, to your application. Okay, thank you very much. Then. So, yeah, if you have a question, you can uh, ask the question now or you can come to me or you can contact me on LinkedIn, for example, or uh, just here I will be. I have, um, thanks for the interesting um, talk. I really enjoyed it. And uh, one question, now if I, do you have like now a feeling how I should, uh, how I should make the title of my crowdfunding campaign um, that I get the most money? Yeah, so if love maybe mm -hmm. or hope, love. happiness. Yeah. So um, this was actually not what uh, it was about, uh, so to say, to uh, get getting real insights into the data. Um, this is what you can definitely do, and also it post analyzing, of course, um, your results. But this was not the focus here. But if you have data, if any of you has data and needs help in analyzing them, I would be happy to help. Um, so and. Um, Unfortunately, I could not answer, I think, the um, question on this, how to um, uh, design your campaign. Okay, thank you very much.